fstoppers.com has teamed up with Mike Kelly to produce Where Art Meets Architecture 2. It covers everything you need to know about photographing and editing luxury properties, and this is the behind-the-scenes series. To learn more about the full tutorial, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. It was finally time for us to pack up and catch our flight to Hawaii. You, like, match your luggage. Do you always do this? When you when you wear like the the aqua shirt, do you use the aqua wraps? Yeah, you do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. This lady in the red is pissed at Mike because he he pulled up the website and the website said like if you're a, a filmmaking crew you're allowed to get media rate on bags um, but she says that we don't have the pass necessary we are not being legitimized <laughs> F -poppers is not legitimized. you've flown around how many how many countries in the last year I did 120,000 miles last year you've shot for Delta you've shot for Delta Delta has purchased images from me Delta's paid you for your photography Delta and they're not acknowledging for photography and they will not protect my bags with media rates she's like you have to have a badge number like who makes that up just the person who printed the badge makes up the stuff that's on the badge this isn't some official thing I'm gonna make one for every single bag <laughs> how many bags did we have 13 checked bags 13 I blame Mike. I don't think he needs all this stuff. It will all get used for once, I promise. At this point, what are we doing? We're just paying the full rate and I then Delta's gonna... The full rate. We went over $600. $600 on luggage. With the credit card that gives me free bags for everyone. So here's all of this media luggage. We've been tweeting with Delta to get this resolved. And Delta has actually been pretty good. They're responding back to us. Believe it or not, before we even took off, Delta had refunded our credit card the entire difference just from us tweeting them. Somehow we have the last row, which means the seats don't recline. They recline. Do? Yeah, you're reclining right here. Oh yeah, we're like laying down. Honolulu. Actually, we're not in Honolulu. I don't know where we are. Kona? Kona Island? The Big Island? I still have to figure that out. It's rare that I'll be on a flight for six hours and not actually know where I'm landing. What island are we on? Woo! This is the Big Island of Hawaii. Is that like the official name? The it Big is, Island? It is the official name. The Big Island, that's an official name. Let's see if Lee knows where we're at. Can you take a guess where we are? The Big Island of Hawaii? That's the official name, the Big Island. Is you, it? Yeah, you got it right. Okay. I had no idea where we were. David and I grabbed the rental cars while the rest of the crew grabbed the bags, and then we drove three hours to the other side of the island. You were acting like I did something. I didn't do anything. You were there! Patrick's getting a little angry because he lost his bag because he grabbed the wrong person's bag. Who, I didn't grab this, any this, bag. What bag? Now he's yelling at me. So this looks like yours, but it's not yours. That means someone else has our drone. No! <laughs> Now I'm upset. That night we all decided to go to sleep and worry about the bag the next day. So it's the first morning in this amazing house. It's the first time I've actually gotten to see it. Uh, it was so dark last night when we got in and it was so late, but oh my gosh, this place is absolutely amazing. It's probably my favorite place that we photographed or gotten to stay at yet. So Patrick has you Doing this right now, I'm finding just, his bag. I'm just taking some initiative. Oh, okay. We have Cindy Blunt's bag. So Patrick's bag definitely was delivered yesterday. Oh. So she definitely <laughs> stole our bag. Someone has to now take our bag back. But it's but still, it's I a still. Good lesson. I still think like you know, when it comes to responsibility, like I could have been more proactive to make sure every bag was accounted for. Just like every one of us could have been more, like we should have stopped and been like whoever took. The bag off the carousel is most at fault because you didn't look. Well, that's it. Bag. I'm never helping with bags again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought everyone came by and looked at their bag. Oh, 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 sure oh, oh. Was Who was the one so, then that had the bag at the car and lifted it into the car? So basically, that was David. Uh, uh, will you just say on video that Patrick is definitely to blame for this fiasco? Like, at the very least, he should not have some other woman's bag. That's very true. 
But again, I, I blame this woman. And it's not because she's not here. It's because she <laughs> intention. If you're a normal yes, truck. If you're a normal truck. I'm cutting this off. It's over. It's <laughs> over. All right, so I have no idea if my luggage is actually at the airport, but I'm having to drive by myself two hours all the way back to the Kona International Airport, drop off the bag that we have, hopefully get our bag with my clothes and the drone, and uh, drive for two hours back while um, everybody teaches the first lesson. We're at this incredible house it's called the Robert Tricky House. It has won a ton of awards. It's been featured in a lot of books. It's about 10 years old now, but nonetheless, an absolutely gorgeous house, and we're super excited to be photographing it. As you can see, I am completely surrounded by lava on all sides of the house, and it's really gonna make for some interesting photos. I'm gonna walk you through my thought process as we shoot interiors, exteriors, daylight, dusk, morning, and night. We're gonna cover a lot of ground over the next few days, and I'm really excited to show you what we got. My goal is to take some cool time lapses while I take this four hour trip. Here I am out in this lava field. This is pretty crazy looking. I figured I had to stop and try a time lapse. It's pretty contrasty. I've taken a few exposures of uh, the foreground and then a time lapse of the, the sky back there, and I'm hoping I can kind of blend them in Premiere to make it a little more interesting. This is pretty wild. Right where I set up my tripod, I noticed this hole. And I came down here, and look, it's like, it's like a lava cave. When I get in here and I shoot pretty high, what happens is I tend to diminish the architecture. I see a lot of people make this mistake. They go buy a 12 foot tripod or they get a, one of those crazy pole rigs and they put the camera as high as they can in an attempt to see over the foreground or see higher into the architecture. But the problem with that is I find that it really diminishes the architecture. I want it to look almost epic, foreboding, larger than life. And when you get high, you tend to lose that. So a lot of the time when people are shooting corporate portraits or similar, they'll shoot up at their subject to give it a sense of power, like a towering type of feel. And the same is true for architecture. I wanna add stature, I wanna add height, I wanna add drama, and getting low is one way to do that. A bonus of us being low in this particular landscape is that we get to see the amazing texture of all this lava. I don't know if this is really a good idea or not, but I parked my car on the side of the road and I've decided to climb a hill potentially to get a cool time lapse. I'm out of shape. Oh boy. So I think I've decided to do something that a lot of people are going to yell at me for on YouTube. I'm going to attempt to leave this camera up on this rock on the side of the road where anyone can find it and could steal it and let it run time lapse of this cool stretch of road where I get the light trails. Hopefully, I can remember how to get back to this location. I noticed a lot of people trying this technique, and I think they kind of mess it up because they spend so much time focusing on the house, but the picture is so much more than that. The foreground is so important. You want to pull people in, and you want to do it in a way that doesn't flatten everything out. So make sure the light is coming towards the camera and that it makes sense in the context of the architecture. You want the light to be motivated by the actual lights in the scene rather than just lighting up everything willy-nilly. Here's the bag, and there's my bag. Burgundy maroon. Did it get left here, or did she actually take this one as well? I see. All right. Thank you so much. Life's good until I have to drive two more hours across the island. But I'm happy we got what we need. One problem that I see people create for themselves all the time is that they don't cover enough ground and their light starts to look splotchy and unnatural. If you'll notice, I'm trying to cover as much ground as I can with that hot light so that I can blend things together seamlessly in Photoshop. Rather than use 300 flash pops to do the same thing, I can get almost the entire frame in one stroke of the hot light. Yeah, I just got the bag, so I'm heading back. What have you been doing for five hours? Oh, you got some? Did you get good ones? I think. I gotta go find the camera. I left it on the side of the road, and I had to draw. <laughs> yeah. But are you sure the camera hasn't been stolen? And you know where along the highway it was? Surprisingly, Patrick was able to recover the camera, and he ended up getting a pretty awesome time lapse to boot. He's gonna be in here 
In the water. In the water. Underneath, like, body extended underwater. Ready? Baby suit on. <laughs> Pointed toes. <laughs> Why did you get him to do this? I didn't get him to do this. I thought his ass crack could make a nice video. Hi, hi. I have never seen something so white. <laughs> Not even myself. Be like, I need a little more bounce. Can you lose the pants? <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? I'm gonna jump off the roof. Jump off the roof? It's too tempting, how can you not? How can no one excite you? Two hours planning where you're gonna shoot, and then you have two more hours to actually get the shot, and maybe we don't even film you. you Patrick, what's wrong? I'll be right back, guys. What's wrong So this, you guys probably saw my review of the, uh, uh, what the heck? Where have you been? I had to get my boots. It's been two and a half days though. I know. If you have no idea what you just watched, you may want to check out our very first behind the scenes series with Elia Licardi called Photographing the World. Patrick buys the infamous moon boots in that season. But if you'd like to learn more about this full tutorial, head over to fstoppers.com slash store and stay tuned for next week's episode when Mike tries to work out with a broken rib. Up. Let's go. Ow! Ah! Ah! Ah!